Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over an explanation of radioactive decay, and that is, of course, going to cover alpha, beta, and gamma decay. And before we do that, please don't forget, down here in the bottom right-hand corner, click on the subscribe button, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And also, while you're at it, why don't you leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the video. Thank you very much. Let's get started. Okay, remember in the previous video, I went over an explanation of the discovery how radioact radioactivity or radiation was discovered, and the first radioactive element that was discovered, uranium, and that was done by Becquerel in 1896. And after they discovered that uranium was radioactive, they want to know what is that radioactivity. And so they took that radioactive sample, see it's right here, this purple sample, that's supposed to be my radioactive sample, they put it in a sample hole, they point it towards a magnetic field, they let that sit there, and the radiation that would come out of that, the particles that would come out of that, some of them would be deflected down and to the right by that magnetic field. Then some would be deflected up or to the left from that magnetic field, and some would not be deflected at all, and they would go straight through. Now, if you know something about magnetic field, charged particles, the Lorentz force, you would know that these particles that were deflected up or to the left, those have a positive charge, and they became known as alpha particles. The ones that were deflected down had a negative charge, and they became known, known as beta particles. And those that went straight through, that's right, they had no charge, and they became known as gamma particles or gamma rays. So we have alpha, beta, and gamma, the first three letters of the Greek alphabet, and we're going to go through because we have now known, and they're now known as alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay. And we're going to go through all three of those. Okay, for alpha decay, it's called alpha decay because it emits what we now call an alpha particle. What is an alpha particle? An alpha particle is basically a helium nucleus in that it has made up of two protons and two neutrons, so it has the basic makeup of a helium nucleus. It's not like there's a helium inside a radioactive element, but it has the same makeup as a helium nucleus, so we give it this designation, helium, HE for helium, and then two protons, and with two neutrons, then the atomic number is two, and the mass number is four. All right, and that's the symbol for that uh, alpha particle. That alpha particle has a positive two charge because it has two protons and two neutrons, two positively charged protons and two neutral charged uh, neutrons makes up plus two charge. And when an atom or an element undergoes alpha decay, then the atomic number goes down by two because it's emitting two protons and that's the atomic number. And then the mass number goes down by four because it's emitting a total of two protons and two neutrons, those are both nucleon, those both have mass, so the mass number goes down by four. We call it a transmutation because it's changing from one element to another. Okay, now, what do I mean by all that? Well, let's go through a decay equation or decay reaction for uranium-238, and when you do these, I think the three things you should remember is that it emits a helium nucleus, and when it does that, as we said, the atomic number goes down by two, the mass number goes down by four, so this is our parent material. This is the parent material. This is uranium, which has an atomic number of 92, 92 protons, and it's uranium-238, the isotope of uranium. And we put a little arrow, just like we do with a chemical reaction, and then we know it's going to emit a helium nucleus, so we write down helium nucleus, and we put down the mass number and the atomic number. This is coming out of that. So in order to find out what we have left over, okay, after the alpha decay of... Uranium-238, we're going to subtract 2 from the atomic number because we lose 2 protons, and that's 90. And then we're going to subtract 4 from the mass number because it's 2 protons and 2 neutrons, so that's 234. And the element 90, element number 90, or the element with the atomic number 90 is thorium. So when, when uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay, it changes into... Uh, transmutates into thorium-234, this being the parent material and this being the daughter material. Okay, now we can maybe make it a little tougher, go back the other way. So we're going to say that we have alpha decay because here's the alpha particle. The result of that alpha decay is lead-208. Well, what was the parent material? Now we're just going to add these two numbers back up. We get 84 to start with. We get 212 to start with. Element 84 is polonium. So polonium undergoes alpha decay to yield lead 208. 
Okay, you have to remember here we have the masses. We can add up the masses on the left and the right. Conservation of mass, conservation of charge, and you can see we have the same mass and the same charge on both sides of those two equations. Okay, now we're going to go over beta decay, and there's two kinds of beta decay. One is beta minus. So this is beta minus. There's also, of course, beta plus. And beta minus occurs in an environment or in atoms where there are too many neutrons. Okay, that's what, why it would be unstable. It doesn't have the right combination of protons and neutrons. In this case, it's a neutron-rich environment. It has too many neutrons. And what happens, therefore, is that a neutron transforms into a proton. And when that neutron transforms into a proton, it emits an electron, which is the beta particle. It is just a regular electron, but in this case, we call it a beta particle and an anti-neutrino or an electron anti-neutrino. And that part of the equation where we see this neutron turning into a proton emitting an electron and a neutrino looks like that. This is the symbol for an electron. This is the symbol P for proton. And this is the Greek letter nu and u, which is the symbol we use for a neutron, excuse me, for a neutrino. And it's an anti-neutrino because it has that line above it. And it's an electron anti-neutrino. So we put an E there. All right, but this is the symbol used for the anti-neutrino. And when that occurs, because a neutron is turning into a proton, then the atomic number goes up by one, but the mass number stays the same because it's just changing from one particle that has mass to another particle that has mass. Both of those are the nucleons, which are in the nucleus. And again, we call it a transmutation because it changes from one element to another because the atomic number goes up by one. Okay, let's do an example also for beta minus. We're going to start out with carbon-14, which undergoes beta minus decay. Remember, it's going to emit an electron and an anti-neutrino. The atomic number goes up by one, and the mass number stays the same. So we start out with our parent material, which is the carbon-14. We draw the arrow, and then I like to draw next the electron and the anti-neutrino. So this is the symbol for the electron, E with a minus. This is the anti-neutrino. This, I just want to point out, is the beta particle. And there are, I would say, three different ways. Some textbooks, some people write this differently. I tend to write an E with a minus, so it's an electron. But you'll also see people write it like this, E. And this is minus one, not the atomic number. This has to do more with the charge. It has no mass, so they put a zero. It has very little mass, so they put a zero. Or the people write sometimes beta, the Greek letter beta, with the minus sign like that. Okay, so I just want to point out there's different ways to write the beta particle. Okay, now we know that the atomic number is going to go up by one, so it goes from carbon to number seven, which is nitrogen, and the mass number stays the same, so it's nitrogen 14 like that, right? Mass number stays the same, atomic number goes up by one. The element one up from carbon is nitrogen like that. And of course, we can go back in the other direction we had kind of start out, not necessarily start out, but the result, the daughter material is bismuth 209. And we could say that we know that we went, started with element 82, and we have the same mass number, 209, and 82 is lead. So lead 209 will undergo beta minus decay to become bismuth 209. Mass number stays the same. Atomic number goes up by one electron and the anti-neutrino. Okay, now we have beta plus decay, beta decay, beta plus decay. It's kind of the opposite. It occurs in an environment where there are two, when the nucleus has too many protons. So the, the instability in the nucleus is due to the fact there are too many positively charged protons. So what happens is a proton will transform into a neutron, and when that occurs, it will emit a positron and a neutrino. Now, the previous one was an electron and an anti-neutrino, but with beta plus, it's a positron and a neutrino, and we can write that part of the symbol like this, proton into a neutron. It's, we use an E, but a plus, because it's kind of the opposite symbol, the uh, of, uh, opposite particle of the electron, and then the neutrino, the NU, for the, this is the symbol NU, the Greek letter NU. It's kind of like a italicized uh, V, and that's an electron neutrino, so we put an E there. Okay, in this case, the atomic number goes down by one because we're changing the proton into a neutron, but once again, the mass number stays the same, and once again, it's called a transmutation. Okay, 
now, let's do an example, of course, we have neon, and neon undergoes beta plus decay. Remember, for beta plus, it emits a positron and a neutrino. The atomic number goes down by one. The mass number stays the same. So we're going to write down the uh, uh, positron, which is the E with a plus, and the neutrino, which is like the V or a, a script V, and it's the letter nu with an E next to it. And then we know the atomic number is going to go down by one. Well, that's the beta particle. I want to point out that's still the beta particle. And there's, of course, three ways to write this one also, with the plus and the plus. All right. And we have uh, the uh, uh, atomic number goes down by one. So the atomic number goes to nine from 10. The mass number stays the same. It's 19. And we have fluorine. So when neon 19 undergoes beta plus decay, the daughter material is fluorine 19 and our positron and the neutrino, okay? Now we can do the same thing, go back by one. We know that when we uh, undergo beta plus, the atomic number goes down by one, so we, that means we start with 12. The mass number stays the same. Element number 12 is magnesium. Magnesium goes un undergoes beta decay to become sodium 23. Okay, and the last one, so to speak, in this case, is gamma. Now, gamma is a little simpler because a gamma particle is not really a particle. A gamma particle is just a high-energy photon. It has no charge, no mass, and so there's no change in the element. So it's just the, uh, ele the, the nucleus is kind of shifting around and emitting some energy, but not really any particles. So nickel-60, when it undergoes uh, gamma decay, you still get nickel-60 and some energy, which we write down as that symbol, gamma, like that, okay? So that is alpha, beta minus, beta plus, and gamma decay. I just want to mention a couple other things. Remember that each of those particles has a different penetrating power, different energy. The alpha particle is the biggest one. It's made of two protons and two neutrons. It can basically be stopped by like your skin or paper. The beta particle is basically an electron or a positron. It can go through paper, but it can be stopped by like a thin sheet of aluminum. And gamma radiation is high energy. It can go through paper, it can go through aluminum, and can even go through lead if the lead is not too thick like that. And the last thing I want to mention is this very interesting diagram, this chart here. You'll notice this black line, this kind of black stair step line, this is where the, uh, there's the right combination of protons and neutrons, and those are stable nucleides. Okay? Then... We have the unstable nucleides, and those are the ones on the left. They tend to undergo beta minus, the ones on the left, because for beta minus, a neutron is turning into a proton, so it wants to move in this direction by having a neutron turn into a proton, so the number of protons increases and the number of neutrons decreases, so it kind of goes down diagonally. In this case, the orange ones are the elements that undergo beta plus decay, and they want to change a proton into a neutron. So the number of protons goes down, the number of neutrons goes up, so they move up one square diagonally. And then up here, the larger elements, the larger nucleuses, nuclei, they undergo alpha decay like that. All right, and this line represents a line where there's an equal number of protons and neutrons, all right, like that. When you add more protons, you got to add more neutrons, and then you move off of that line. Okay, so there you go. I think that was it. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Please, once again, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video, and don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.